Hi everyone, welcome to Space Available TV. I'm Hilda Mitchell, co-founder of Space Available. This is the third in the series of the RE3 workshop sessions where we reconnect, reimagine, and redesign. Exploring future design systems, circularity, and bio-innovations. Today, we welcome our partners, Microlabs, a company based in Indonesia, innovating with mycelium as a material of the future. Ronald Diaz, great to see you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, wh where are you calling in from? I'm in Bandung currently, uh, at my house. It's nice. So yeah, Ronald Diaz, let's just take a step back um, to when we first connected. So back in 2018, Yes. If my memory serves me correct. We met uh, at Dutch Design Week. Yes, in Eindhoven. Um, that's that's right. I was there, kind of exploring mycelium, and I and I I was introduced to you from our good friend Dries from the Dutch Design Foundation. Um, and I remember you kind of showed me your watches, your mycelium kind of straps, and you were kind of experimenting with various things. So, how did you get into mycelium in the beginning, and how long have you guys been? Um, at Micro Labs, how long you you guys been doing this? Yeah, so we started off, uh, I think around 2015. <laughs> Before that, we actually doing a gourmet mushroom thing. We created a DIY mushroom kit uh, called Growbox, and then started off. We we actually deep getting deeper into down the rabbit hole like Alice, and then we've also like we found out that mushroom itself not only can act as a like nutritional gourmet food or like super food uh they can also act as uh other things uh like a uh, forest uh microforestation and also microfiltration for water and etc and also one of the uh, possibilities itself is uh, mycelium materials so uh, our my background is actually architecture that's why uh, our first iteration of uh, mycelium materials or mushroom materials is actually building materials. And then uh, after uh, several projects with several uh, partners, we also found out that it can also act as a leather like materials and then it's it keeps snowballing afterwards. Great. So you explored this material initially for architectural purposes. That was the that was the main ambition. And is that because you were looking for a sustainable alternative or why mycelium at that period? Yes, we were thinking like uh, on architecture standpoint or like material, uh, building material standpoint, uh, we always, uh, or most of the time, we always use uh, virgin materials. So for example, like concrete or like steels, we destroy mountains, forests for it. So we were thinking, it should be like we it has to be some other like more sustainable alternatives out there otherwise we cannot uh, stay uh, live like this so we found out that uh, mush mushroom or mycelium itself can also act as a, a replacement or alternatives for uh, sustainable materials and because it doesn't need a virgin materials we can use any like cellulosic agri agroforestry waste uh, and I, uh, that's why we think it's 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 a ha has a huge potential to replace uh, like a conventional building materials itself. Mm. And and when we were first exploring working together a few years ago now, I, the the leather that you were producing, um, it felt like it was a really amazing thing that you'd produce, but it didn't feel like it was fully ready for market yet. It was kind of felt a little brittle. Um, but the idea was there, and when we sort of look at today, what you're doing, which is extremely, I mean, it's incredible. It's, it seems really um, versatile, durable, um, it feels great, um, and yeah, you've come a long way. How's that journey been? Like, how have you guys, is there a lot of R&D? Um, I'm sure there's been a lot of challenges. Like, how have you managed to get your material from being something that falls apart to being really probably some of the best mycelium material that i've seen out there like how have you guys um developed that in such a short space of time yeah so basically with so many iterations so rather than keeping our materials to the lab uh we directly tested our materials to the market itself so we collaborate with like several artisans and uh like creative minds 
to create uh, to test directly our materials into wearable objects and then uh, get feedbacks from them and then afterwards like there, there that's actually our iteration loop uh, so we gave the materials create the products get feedbacks and uh, like get destroyed get feedbacks and then we improve and then that's the the cycles that we've been doing for this past I think, three years yeah and at this kernel, we, we are just still barely scratched the surface. Yeah, incredible. And um, I mean, here at Space Available, I mean, our mission is to, to make space for nature. And as, as I'm sure you've seen, we we work a lot with waste materials. So we extract the, the sort of plastic waste as humans leave in nature. Uh, but we also explore the alternative working with yourself um, in the lab, um, you know, kind of searching for the alternative. And we're working primarily with the composite, um, the mycelium composite. I've got a very early prototype that we made here, which is kind of our classic incense holder in a mycelium object that was for, from a couple of years ago now. Um, and, you know, our journey together was it's been very experimental. Um, it's like, like all good things, it takes time. Um, but I feel like today we're in a really good place to the point where we're actually growing furniture together. Um, how, like, just explain what this composite is, just for anybody that doesn't quite understand it. Like, what, what, what is it, and why is it different to the leather? Yeah. So the composite itself, uh, we actually get the inspiration from tempeh. Tempeh is Indonesian traditional food, which is soybeans binded with mushroom mycelium. So we just replace uh, soybeans with agroforestry waste, which at this, uh, like, for this projects, we use sawdust, and then binded them with mushroom mycelium itself. So we do not use any like adhesive, uh, additional adhesive at these materials. Uh, the mycelium itself act at its, as its natural adhesive or at, as its uh, uh, cement, for example, like replacement for cement, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's I think that's the explanation for the composite itself. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's a it's a very interesting material. We've um, we're exploring obviously art sculptures, kind of homeware, as you mentioned, furniture, um, and yeah, I think it's a very exciting material with a with a big future, and can definitely come back some of the um, issues that we're getting from the synthetic materials, biodegradable. Um, you know, it, it's you know it, it acts as sort of nutrition for Mother Earth at the end of life, doesn't it? You could literally compost it if if it was to break. So it's a fantastic material. Um, so, so I think we should um, give everybody an insight into how we've actually made this um, and how we've grown it. Could you just sort of walk us through the sort of step-by-step -step process from the very beginning of like us creating a 3D model to then, you know, working with your you and your scientists in the lab. Um, could you just sort of run us through the sort of the, the steps yeah. of how, like for anybody that probably doesn't know what this is and how it grows, just how we've sort of managed this and then we can um yeah we can we can sort of lead on to the workshop video from your steps sure uh i think from from our side uh what we need is actually a mushroom substrate so we need to gather a substrate that for this project we use the leftovers of a carpentry industry uh, we, uh it's pretty common in bandung there's like an abundance of waste of uh, sawdust and wood chips in, in Bandung areas. So we gather those ways and then uh, we sterilize them using autoclave. Autoclave is, uh, we sterilize them with uh, pressure using uh, a machine called autoclave. Uh, we, uh, sterilization uh, is actually for this substrate to not have any other uh, contaminants or bacterial or any other fungi that live with it, it, it in the substrate itself and then after it sterilized the substrate itself we actually put the mushroom inside and then have this mushroom uh, bag you know uh, fully colonized with mushroom and then uh, when we want to mold the uh, we want if you want to shape the uh, the mycelium composite itself, we take one of those uh, bag of mushroom substrate and then we mold it into the mold that we want to shape it into any shape that we want to have. And then uh, we pressed it 
uh, evenly to make sure that it dents enough. Uh, and then afterwards, we close the uh, the mold itself to make sure that uh, the mycelium can fully colonize back the substrate. I think it will be around like a week, and then afterwards we can uh, pop it up, uh, pop it out of the mold, the the mushroom mycelium itself, the, the composite itself out of the mold, and then let them grow another like a couple of days. And then voila, there, uh, your mushroom composite is ready. And then afterwards, uh, we dry them. We we dry them. We we put them in the oven. We uh, the oven itself is uh, we dry them under one hundred degrees Celsius. And then uh, why we have to dry them? We want to make sure that there is no other like leftovers or fungi uh, live or still living uh, within the mushroom composite itself so uh, we dried them for like um, six to eight hours and then uh, the mushroom composite is ready yes <laughs> fantastic and then when it's ready it looks something like this this is one of our early prototypes which we're going to show you guys in the re3 video coming up next so um why don't we sort of get into that now and uh open up the process so people at home can learn and see what see what we've been up to. Ronald Diaz, thank you very much. We'll now uh, head into the RE3 workshop video with Michael Labs, where we reconnect, reimagine, and redesign uh, a better, better world using this fantastic sustainable material, mycelium. Awesome. Let's get, in. Let's yeah. get into it. Available TV.